Yan. Okay. So, bago tayo mag... Meron, meron tayong two things na pag-uusapan bago tayo mag-lecture. Una yung schedule natin, pangalawa yung submission nyo dun sa Facebook group natin. Uunahin natin yung schedule. Ano ang schedule nyo every Monday and Tuesday? Isang section lang naman kayo, correct? So, ano ang schedule nyo every Monday and Tuesday? Anong oras ang pasok ninyo every Monday and Tuesday? Wala po. Wala. Wala. Pagka Wednesday and Thursday, anong oras ang pasok ninyo? 9, 10, 11, and 12. And? 9 to 10, 11 to 12. 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11 po. 9 to 11 po. Dalawang subject lang kayo ng cycle 2. Yes po. Tama ba? Okay, kasi ganito. Magtetest na kasi yung misis ko at ang schedule niya is Wednesday, Thursday ng umaga. So walang mag-aasikaso dito sa aming mga anak. So, e face to patient test day. So, ang choice ko lang talaga, mailipat kayo ng Monday and Tuesday ng umaga or hapon. Or, since na ang klase niyo is Wednesday, Thursday, 1 to 2 ng, ng hapon ng Wednesday, Thursday ang magiging klase natin. So, ayoko naman mag-decide na, oh, dito na kayo maten, dito na kayo maten. Uh, gusto ko, makapakinggan yung sasabihin ninyo. So, which do you prefer ba? Um, Wednesday, Thursday? Since the Wednesday, Thursday naman talaga klase nyo na 1 to 2? Or Monday, Tuesday ng, uma ng umaga or hapon din? It's up to you. Ano sa palagay nyo ang mas magandang malipatan? Anybody? Uh, class representative. Sino ba yung parang tumata yung president ng class ninyo or class representative ninyo? Anybody? Anybody? Hello? Hello? Jeric, ikaw na lang ulit. Jeric, Jeric po. Oh, siya daw, si Mr. Jeric? Sir. Sa asan siya? Sir. Oh, Mr. Jeric, what do you think? Siguro, sir, same day, pero hapon. 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 Oh, so, 1 to 2 p.m.? Yes, Would that be just fine? Hmm. Yes, bro. For everybody? Yes, sir. Baka, okay lang naman po. Yes, baka, hindi. Kasi kaya kung tinatanong, baka mamaya meron ano eh. So, 1 to 2 p.m. every Wednesday and Thursday. Okay? Actually, I'm asking you favor eh. Hindi, <laughs> hindi, kumbaga, it's still up to you, mga mister at saka miss. So, 1 to 2 every Wednesday and Thursday, babaguhin ko na yung tracker dun sa MTC. Tracker para makita ng HR at saka ng program head. So, 1 to 2 ang meeting natin tomorrow. Okay? So, starting tomorrow yun. Kasi ngayon, magkaklase na tayo eh. Okay? So, amenable? Everybody? Are, are everybody are amenable? Okay tayo? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank yes. you very much. I I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Pangalawa, nangingi ako ng pabor. Ito naman, pangalawa, eh medyo i-call out ko naman kayo. Okay, hindi ba, hindi nyo natatandaan nung nag-lecture ako nung nakaraan previously. Pagka magsasubmit ka, ka ako kayo sa submission post, see to it na tapusin nyo muna yung week 2. Nang sa ganun, sabay-sabay sana. Para pagka-grade natin, makikita pag-pull up ko ng class record nyo, okay na, may week 1 and week 2 na, prelim grade. Kasi ang ang recording naman talaga niyan is 3. Prelim, midterm, at saka finals yung submission ng outputs. Pero, since na, ganito ha, since nakapag-submit na kayo sa Facebook group natin, nakapag-comment na kayo ng mga outputs nyo, ganito na lang ang request. Okay? Say for example, nandito si Mr. Jeremy Campwell. Tama, nandito ka? Hello? Parang nakita nga kita. Hello, Mr. Jeremy? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, ganito gagawin mo. At the end of this week, tapos na yung week 2, correct? So, magsasubmit na kayo ng week 2. Hanapin mo yung comment mo. So, ang gagawin mo, hahanapin mo yung comment mo, scroll mo yung comment section dito sa submission post, hanapin mo yung comment mo, and then mag-reply ka doon sa comment mo ganyan. Okay. Ah, sure. So, pagka-comment mo niyan, mag-reply ka, tsaka mo ngayon i-comment yung photo nung output mo para sa week 2 naman. Okay? Deal? Mga mister at tsaka miss? Okay tayo, Ron? Yes, po. So, so yes, ibig sabihin, 
hindi tayo magko-comment ng panibago para sa week 2 kasi pagka ganoon magkakaroon ng magiging chaotic yung comment comment section yung comment thread maghahanapan tayo okay so ang mangyayari hanapin niyo yung comment niyo ng week 1 and then reply dun mismo sa comment niyo doon niyo i uh, post yung photo ng sagot niyo screenshot man yan or yellow pad man yan walang problema kaya kung mapapansin niyo di ba sabi ko pag once na ni-like ko na automatic na nagrade ang ko na kaya wala tuloy ako nila-like kasi nga gusto ko lang maging klaro muna okay na magla-like ako right after the week 2 submission okay so so ganyan ang gagawin natin eto naman kasi ang output naman sa kada cycle ng NPC kasi is hindi naman talaga by week eh by term kumbaga prelim term or prelim period midterm period at saka final period okay same din naman again pa, para do sa mga nagwo-worry na ngayon lang nagparamdam baka late na again hindi ako masyadong keen sa deadlines kumbaga naiintindihan ko naman pandemic iba yung sitwasyon ng face to face iba yung sitwasyon ng pandemic so teachers uh, should adapt Hindi ko naman sinasabi na buti pa to si Sir Riva, ano yung nag, nag, ganun sa deadline, yung ibang teachers. Again, nasa, nakwento ko na rin yan, di ba, na dapat masalamatan nyo yung mga teachers ninyo na tineterrorize kayo pagdating sa mga deadline or sa mga subjects or sa mga assignments or sa klase ninyo. Why? Kasi once na you uh, have a job na uh, three years or four years from now, mas malala yung magiging boss nyo, mas terorista magiging boss nyo. So, yung kaming mga teachers nyo, tinitrain lang kayo sa real world. So, pinapatatag kayo. So, pasalamatan nyo pa rin yung mga teachers nyo na ganun. Pero, in my case, kasi, hindi ako nagmaminus ng mga late, eh. Hindi ko ginagawa yung pagka-pandemic. Uh, na, na, kumbaga, uh, since na nag-online class na, nag-new normal na, pandemic learning na, nakapag-adapt tayo dapat. So, yes, walang minus ang late. Actually, pwede nyo nga isabit lahat yung mga output during finals pa eh. Yung at the end of the semester pa, pwede naman eh. Okay naman eh. Kasi nga, kumbaga parang mga correspondence modality sa ibang mga subjects, correct? Na finals pa talaga dahil nga modular naman talaga sila. Tapos, working student, pwede naman yun. But if I were you, if I were, if I were you, Make it a habit. Kumbaga, dapat embedded na sa brain mo, embedded na sa pagkatao mo, embedded na sa karakter mo, embedded na sa personalidad mo na ikaw ay gumagawa ora mismo ng task once na in-assign sa'yo. Practice those habits. Pagdating ng trabaho, ikaw ang pinaka-reliable, pinaka-responsible na empleyado sa trabaho mo makakarga niyo yan, madadala niyo yan. Okay? Sir, kasi mahirap po talaga eh. Kumbaga, etc. etc. Kumbaga, parang uh, naninibago po kami at naiinis po sa pandemic learning. Pandemic learning is, is here to stay. Kaya naman tayong magagawa eh. So, we have to just make the best out, out of everything. Take the challenge head on. Yun lang naman ang masasabi dyan. Take the challenge head on embrace the problems, engage the problems that it, it will never go away. Okay? Pag nahihirapan, you pray for guidance, you, you pray for wisdom, ganun lang. Okay? So, uh, may deal na tayo sa schedule and then, and then may deal na tayo sa submission. Okay? So, ganyan ang gagawin ninyo. Kaya hindi po, pasensya na kaya hindi po pa nalalike. Okay? So, once na nag-Friday na, kasi Friday naman talaga yung pinaka-end ng week 2 or ng prelim natin, Friday this week. So, pag once na nag-Friday na night na, or Saturday siguro, makakapag-like-like na ako, makakapag-check-check na ako. Once na meron akong na-miss, say for example, uh, si Miss Joanna Magbanwa, na-like ko. Pero yung gawa ni Miss Mariano, hindi ko na-like. Yung gawa ni Mr. Jeremy, hindi ko na-like. So, baka na-miss ko, call out nyo ako. Sir, na-like na yung nasa iba pa, iba pa namin kami. Hindi, call out nyo lang ako. Okay? Kung baga, tag me dito sa comment nga, comment nyo. Sir, nag, eto po yung sabi ko, hindi nyo pa po nalalike. Walang problema sa akin yun. Basta, basta call me out palagi. Okay? Um, again, merong nag-message sa akin na 
ko alam dito ba sa section na tayo. Regarding do sa, sorry siya ng sorry, sorry siya, siya, siya ng sorry dahil ang uh, nag-message siya, bandang alas 11 na ng gabi. Sorry siya ng sorry. Again, walang problema sa akin yun. Kahit nga madaling araw kayo mag-message, you don't need to apologize. Kasi nga, alam naman natin na, na yung mga ibang sitwasyon sa inyo, hindi ganun katulad ng mga normal na oras. Nagtatrabaho yung iba. Yung iba, stable lang internet ng madaling araw. So, madaling araw lang nakaka-engage. Huwag ka kayong mag-sorry, okay lang yun. Kagabi, nagpuyat pa nga ako, alas dos, kasi nga, ano eh, nag-check ako ng gawa ng mga uh, third year na hawak ko sa education. So, okay lang ng madaling araw. Kung minsan, madaling araw na hindi ko na nasin yung message nyo, baka yun na yung panahon na hindi ko na kinaya. Eh. Nandok na talaga ako, natulog na talaga ako. So, you don't need to apologize. Walang problema doon. Message me. Okay? Kahit ba yan na professional hours na, okay lang message nyo. Sa akin lang yun ha, baka mamaya gawin nyo sa iba yun. Kasi tama rin naman ang NPC na dapat bian 5pm hindi na dapat kasi merong dapat mga quality time din ng mga teachers. Papahinga yan, nag-check-check yan. Kumbaga gumagawa ng mga lesson plan yan. So, hindi na dapat talaga i-store din ng BN5. Sa akin, sige, okay lang. Walang, walang problema. Message nyo lang ako. You don't need to apologize. Okay, clear? Are we clear? Okay na tayo? Yes, pa. Everybody? Yes, pa. Okay. okay. So, balik na tayo ngayon doon sa module natin. Okay? Kung mapapansin ninyo, yung module natin na pinost ko doon sa Facebook group natin, eto yon Pinost ko kasi yun eh ito. Mga reading materials yon correct? So, yung reading materials na yon eto nga pala yung ano? Ay! Uh, Mr. AJ Pran, nasan ka? Nandito ka ba? Mr. Pran? Mr. AJ? Wala? Absent? Uh, wait lang ko, call out ko lang to. Nagkamali siya eh. So, itong mga pinos ko na to na week 1 module, week 2 module, yan yung module natin sa art app. Kung mapapansin nyo, iba yung pagkakagawa ng module as compared to other subjects. Uh, ko alam ko sino teacher gumawa nito. So, ang ginawa niya, by week. So, pinos ko na lang. Ito yung mga reading materials ninyo. Yan. Click-click nyo lang yan. Once sa clinic nyo, merong mga link dyan na nakaprovide para naman doon sa week 2 na task natin. Okay? So, yung week 2 na task, dito na tayo tatawid niya. So, week 2 na task, ang gagawin nyo kasi sa week 2, ang, um, eto, pull, pull up na lang natin. Napull up ko naman na kanina. Ito. Saan na ba yun? Art up. So, ang gagawin nyo sa week 2, nandun naman din, nakapost na rin sa sa week 1 and week 2 submission post, ay ito ang isasubmit nyo. Ito, hindi yung nasa bandang baba. Yun din yung isang nagtanong eh. Ito. So, expectation for the week, submit the, the, the project plan for week 1 activity. So, okay na tayo dyan, right? Or video your reflection on the given guide questions. So, merong mga guide questions yan. Manage your time wisely. You should be able to complete the requirements of this course in 9 hours. Merong mga guide questions dyan. Okay, dito sa um, sa uh, week 1. Asa na ba week 1? Wait lang ha. Ito. Ayan. Wait lang. Ayan. Ah, hindi, hindi yan. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Wait lang ha. Scroll lang natin. Tungkol dun sa sinabmit yung web design. Ayan. Okay? Yan. Reflection lang naman ng hinihingi. Kasi merong activity dito sa week 2. Ito naman yun. Sa bandang baba. Ayan. Dito rin nagkaroon ng confusion eh. 
Sir, excuse po, sir. Wala yes, yes, pong, yes. ano, hindi po ay nakapresent. Ay, sorry, ano ba yan? Makantang. <laughs> Wait lang. <laughs> My bad, sorry. <laughs> okay, Wait. Ayan. Ayan naman pala eh. Wait. So, babalikan natin Facebook mamaya. Wait lang. So, eto. So, meron kasi sa week 2. Eto yon Na activity. Doon sa bandang baba. Okay. Asan na ba yun? scroll ko lang, wait lang. Ayan, be sure that you read and watch the recommended video and materials before doing this activity. Reflect on the lessons learned from the readings and the video. You can manage your time and accomplish the task by following the guidelines below. You choose, you choose one example of art from the contemporary artist and tell what major form of art is it. Make a short background of the artist. What is the meaning behind the art? Uh, what important message the artist would like to convey in terms of personal or political or spiritual and what impact does the art have on you? Okay, ito yung instruction. Choose one contemporary visual art in the Philippines that you want to share. Tell the background of the artist and what the art is all about. What are the materials used? What do you think is the meaning of the art to the artist? Uh, personal interpretation yun na hindi kagagamit ng mga reference link. How important is visual art in shaping the modern world? Why does it evolve continually? You will include this in your web art por portfolio. So portfolio sa project yun. Okay? So ibig sabihin, sasagutan nyo to pero hindi nyo isasabit sa akin sa week 1 and week 2. Sasagutan nyo to, lalagay nyo lang yun sa sa device ninyo, isave lang ninyo, type nyo sa word, kung lahat na paggamit nyo, or phone ang gamit nyo, or yellow pad ang gamit nyo, isave nyo lang. Okay? Gagamitin nyo yan sa portfolio. Ang gagawin natin naman, okay, sa reflection na sinasabi, okay, wait lang ha, ito, sample reflection ng isang web design, ah, so, sorry, ng isang artist, parang ganito, so babasahin nyo lang to magbibigay lang kayo ng reaction, reflection. Okay? Kumbaga, na ano ang masasabi nyo? Walang, walang wrong answer dito kasi reflection to eh. So, bas, just, kumbaga, dapat um, pre-flowing lang yung, lang yung mga ideas nyo. Don't worry too much dun sa baka mali yung may sagot nyo o hindi. Wala kasi reflection. So, kung ano lang yung nasa isip ninyo. Okay? So, ang mangyayari ngayon, mangyayari ngayon, so week 1 okay week 1 expectation ng week 1 ayan answer the questions posted in each reading activity save your answers uh, in a piece of paper ayan uh, the notes application on your phone uh, output lahat lahat take note of the, any concept terminologies that you are not familiar with use the check ayan etc etc review the orientation guide reach out eto naman ang hinihingi naman dito reflection naman para dito sa ginawa nyo sa week 1 so yun ang ilalagay nyo ngayong comment para dito sa Facebook nyo para sa week 2 yun nagkaroon ng confusion kasi kasi yung yung activity dun sa pinost ko na na week 2 na module, si save nyo lang yun para yun sa portfolio. Reflection naman doon sa web art design ninyo, sa ginawa ninyo, isasubmit nyo naman dito, re-replyan nyo yung comment nyo. Diyan na yung week 2. Doon sa pagre-reply nyo sa comment nyo. Okay? Malinaw na ha? So, ibig sabihin, again, parang kanina yung dupal to na present, hahanapin nyo yung comment nyo ng week 1, magre-reply kayo ron. Doon nyo ilalagay yung week. Sir, itatype po ba? Hindi. Screenshot nyo lang yung sagot ninyo, then ilagay nyo dyan as picture. Or picture nyo yung yellow pad na sagot nyo, ilagay nyo dyan as picture. Okay? So, ganyan ang gagawin ninyo. Yes, Miss uh, Miss Haling, go ahead. Nagtaas ka ng kamay. Yes? O, napindot lang. Sige, go ahead. Napindot lang ba? Nap 
pindot lang. Okay. So, katulad na sinabi doon sa week 2 na activity, merong video yan. Okay? Meron kayong mga uh, video na kukunin at saka papanoorin. Pinul up ko na ngayon. Eto, eto naman siya. Wait. Eto naman siya. Papanoorin natin yan mamaya-maya. Papahapyawan ko muna yung lecture ng week 2. Okay? So, ito, itong link na to ng YouTube video, nandun din sa module natin ng week 1 at saka week 2 nakalagay dito. Okay? So, para hindi kayo nalilito at, naka, at nakaconfuse. Okay? Hindi ako naririnig, sir. Type mo na lang yung question mo. Sige, ano ba yun? Miss Haling. Wait lang natin yung tanong ni Miss Haling, ha? So, yung week 2 po namin, bali reflection lang po ng week 1 na ginawa ninyo, yung web design. Oo. Tapos yung week 2 activity naman sa bandang baba ng module, isi-save nyo yun kasi lalagay natin sa portfolio yun doon sa project ninyo. Okay? So, ganun ang mangyayari. Okay, so parang mag, mag, talaga magkakabit yung week 1 at saka week 2 na output. Ire-replyan nyo lang yung week 1 nyo. Okay? So, nag-gets na, Miss Haling. Okay na tayo? Are we good? Okay. Okay. So, eto na. Okay lang. Sige. Okay. Here we go. Saan na ilagay yun? Safari. Safari. Okay. Sa 2.2 muna tayo na reading material. Ito ay makiklik nyo dun, sa, dun mismo sa module. Okay. So, clinic po na. Yun yung, yung kulay blue na link. Okay? So, art appreciation introduction, ito yung mga uh, terminologies naman, yung 2.2. Pinull up ko lang ang didiscuss natin yung 2.3. So, lahat ng mga terminologies nandito na. Itong mga terminologies na to, ito ang kukunin natin para naman sa quiz system. Okay? So, lahat yan, lahat yan, elements of art, ayan na. Okay? Ayan na. Kalagay na lahat dyan. Pati yung mga design, yan, lahat na dyan na. Okay? So, yan yung 2.2. Yung 2.3 naman na reading material, okay, eto na yung basic element ng art. Okay? You, kahit na hindi nyo screenshot ko, nandun na sa module. Naka-post na sa Facebook group nyo. So, yung art, mga basic elements of art, yan yung line, okay, color, shape, texture. Yan ang mga uh, elements, basic elements ng art. Nung nakaraan uh, sa PowerPoint presentation or sa slides, nakuha nyo ba yon Yung slides nung nakaraan na screenshot nyo ba? Kasi importante din yun sa quiz eh. Hindi. Kung hindi, i-call out nyo ako mamaya bago tayo mag i i-upload sa Facebook para hindi ko makalimutan. Okay? So, basic elements of art line. Kung mapapansin ninyo, uh, kahit saan kayong makakita ng nagdo-drawing, kahit saan, ha, visual arts to, itong pinag-uusapan natin dito na basic elements ng art. Kahit saan kayong nakakita ng nagdo-drawing, puro skeleton, skeleton palagi yan. Or puro parang pens palagi ang drawing. Kasi nandun yung magiging pattern niya. Kasi yun ang pinakamahalaga. Kumbaga, kung ang puno ay may ugat, ang drawing ay mayroong line. Yung mga lines mismo, yan ang magiging guide para makapag-create ka ng visual art. Okay? So, a very important element of art is line. Imagine a work of art with no use of lines. Whether it is drawing, painting, or sculpture, lines are important. They help form shapes. So, so kung, kung mapapansin niyo ang nilagay ditong photos ay dalawang klase. Isang talagang mga straight lines at isang curve na mga lines. So, yung mga yan, nagsaserve yan. Ito, katulad nitong drawing na to. Yung peacock skirt by Birdsley. Kung mapapansin ninyo, naka-outline lang yan lahat. Okay? Yung likod ng peacock, ayan, yung buntot niya, may lines yan. So, ibig sabihin, yan ang magiging guide. Nung magiging shape. So, kung magdo-drawing ka, 
lagyan mo ng parang demarcation, lagyan mo ng parang harang, yun yung tinatawag na line. So every drawing, every painting, lahat yan, every sculpture, merong hangganan. Yun ang tinatawag na line. Okay? So yan ang pinaka isa sa pangunahing basic element ng art. So ma-appreciate natin yung art pagka talaga maganda yung art, correct? At hindi magaganda yung art kung hindi yan galing sa line, sa foundational concept na line ang magsisimula dun sa pag-drawing mo o paggawa mo ng art. Whether it, 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 it's a straight line, uh, horizontal man or vertical man yan, or curved line, or crooked, parang zigzag, basta line or merong demarcation or merong harang yung drawing. Para pag-ulay ka man, hanggang doon lang yung kulay ng likod, hanggang doon lang yung kulay ng puntot, hanggang doon lang yung kulay ng mata, hanggang doon lang yung kulay ng kamay. So, nakaline siya. Okay? So, yan yung basic element. Isa sa basic element yung line. Next is color. Of course. Siyempre. Naman. Mer meron tayong tinatawag na mga uh, charcoal painting. Ang ganda-ganda rin, di ba? Pero kung i-imaginein mo, uh, dig deeper, yung charcoal na painting. Wait lang, mag-accept lang tayo. Okay? Yung charcoal na painting, kahit na black and white yun, parang meron pa rin shade. Diba? May color pa rin. So, yung, kung, kung yung line ang nagbibigay ng, punda, ng foundation, um, foundational value ng art mo, okay, yung color naman ang nag -e emphasize ng ganda mo, ng ganda nung ginagawa mo. Nagbibigay ng kulay, nagbibigay ng story dun sa ginagawa mo. Artist value color is another important element of art. It's a wonderful tool to create mood in a piece of art. The effect of color can have a strong in impact on your feelings. Do you remember the last rainy day when it was dark and dreary outside? How, how did your mood change when the sun came back out and lightened everything up? Diba? I yun ang ibig sabihin ng concept ng color. Bakit nilalagyan natin ng color yung art? Isa pang magandang halimbawa. Um, total, natakin natin nung nakaraan yung Justice League, di ba? Ni Zack Snyder, correct? Ano kaibahan ni Josh Whedon sa Zack Snyder na film? Yung kay Josh Whedon, colorful yung cinematography niya. Ibig sabihin makulay. Kay Zack Snyder, dark ang team niya palagi. Ginawang, ginawang uh, green, ginawang blue ni Josh Whedon, yung red na light at saka yung dark na team ni Zack Snyder. So, so kumbaga, kasi ba bakit ang pinopromote doon, ang ini-emphasize doon ni Zack Snyder, dark yung king ng kwento niya. Kahit na kids movie yung Justice League, ang kinikwento niya doon ay dark. Dark yung theme. Kaya yung version niya ay darker ang color. Yung, whereas yung, yung binago ni Josh Whedon yun, alam naman niya na yung mga kids din ang manunood. So, binigay niya, binigyan niya ng parang iba-ibang kulay yung team dapat na dark ang nasa konsepto naman ni Zack Snyder. So, yun ang, yun ang na-add na value ng color as basic element of art. Okay? So, katulad nitong mga examples na to. Okay? Next, shape. Okay? So, kung, kung ang line ay foundational na ang value niya dun sa drawing or dun sa painting or dun sa art at yung color yun naman yung nagiging emphasis dun sa story nung, nung art mo, yung shape naman, natural, ang purpose niyan ay para magkaroon ng um, real world na na team yung dinodrawing mo. May shape na. Okay? Nagdrawing ka ng tao stickman. Kung tutuusin sa stickman, hindi naman talaga tao yun eh. So, you have to draw shapes para maging tao talaga yung piniperceive mo o yung nare-reflect ng drawing mo at saka ng art mo. So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng shape as the basic, one of the basic element dun sa art or paggawa ng art. Okay? Next, texture. Pag sinabing texture, yun yung pagka hinawakan mo or para pagka tiningnan mo siya, uh, medyo magaspang, medyo smooth, or medyo embossed, medyo parang 3D, medyo parang 2D, okay? Three-dimensional, medyo parang two-dimensional, yun yung ibig sabihin ng texture. Kung mapapansin ninyo, pagka 
nasa mall kayo, o di kaya may painting sa bahay nyo, hawakan nyo yung, yung canvas. Canvas ang tawag doon eh. Hawakan nyo siya, tingnan nyo yung, yung, yung kapain nyo yung canvas niya. Iba-iba yun. Okay? okay. Nag-accept lang tayo. Okay, so, so yun ang ibig sabihin naman ng texture. The last element of art is texture, which refers to the way the paint feels of the surface of the canvas. So, so yun. Kung ang line, yan yung foundational value ng drawing or ng painting or ng art. At yung color, yung, it will give emphasis to the story of the art. At yung shape naman, it will show the art itself kasi nga, shape na. Okay? Nagkaroon na ng clarity yung drawing mo, hindi na siya line. Hindi lang siya basta-basta color. Naging tao na talaga siya. Visible na na tao yung pinoportray mo doon. Hindi kaya mountain ang pinoportray mo doon. So may shape na. Yung texture naman, yan naman yung pinaka-soul ng drawing mo or ng art mo. Yan yung talagang magbibigay ng parang bulay, uh, sorry, buhay doon sa art mo. So yun yung differences nung mga yun. Texture, line, shape, at saka color. Para ma-appreciate natin yan, yung gumawa ng module ng art appreciation, merong video na uh, nilagay doon sa module nyo. Papanukurin natin ito. Okay? Again, para sa benefit nung ngayon lang pumasok, ang pasok na natin bukas, ilalagay ko na lang sa tracker, ang pasok natin bukas ay 1 to 2 na. Okay? Ito na. Yan. Awesome. It's a word that is associated with a great deal of professions in today's world, and your thoughts as to what it pertains to will vary, as will your feelings towards it. Some choose to admire art, to study it vigorously, to display their talents with glee or reluctance, and others might choose to deny art as being part of their lives. Throughout history, however, Art has had a critical role in shaping the modern world as it walks hand in hand with innovation, evolving our knowledge, society, and state of being as we evolved it. Let us begin near the edge of humanity, the upper Paleolithic age of man, a time when survival was the primary objective with art serving this very purpose. Cave drawings were used as a way to recount events and the things that early man had treasured, one such thing being the hunt. While cave drawings had very little form or style to them, they perfectly illustrate how man thought during this era. Take this cave drawing, for instance. The beasts present are drawn dimensionally proportionate because man saw them as vital for his survival. While the human forms are especially flat and thoughtless in nature due to the underdeveloped sense of self of prehistoric man. Moving into the Neolithic era, Humans begin to form settlements. Man uses art as a way to honor ancestors and as part of ritual practices, done by way of statues, totems, masks, and effigies. In both of the aforementioned eras, it could be argued that because these illustrations and designs were used as primal survival mechanisms, that they cannot be classified as art. However, it is worth considering that these eras laid the foundation for art as a whole, and thus they are worth mentioning and classifying as art. The Bronze Age saw the dawn of civilizations, with humans creating primal works of art to honor their ancestors, as well as to invoke and reinforce belief in something greater than themselves, achieved by crafting statues, pots, and masks designed to be symmetrical and durable. Additionally, literacy had begun to take root within certain civilizations, with hieroglyphics forming the basis for keeping records and communication in ancient Egypt. Considering that at their core, these were just symbols which were allotted meaning, it is theorized that this form of writing was a natural evolution of cave art to an extent. Despite being miles apart, the ancient Mayans of South America had developed a similar carving style, displaying figures and murals which served a similar purpose to hieroglyphics, but also led to the development of some of the first calendars used by civilization in place of using seasonal cycles to depict the passing of time. The ability to carve and sculpt are considered to be specialized skills in these societies, vital for ritualistic practices, recording data, expansion of societies, and consequently, how we're able to learn about them ourselves. Art across this era was not used primarily for decoration, but rather as a tool for survival and a testament to the advancements of a civilization. 
we shift our focus to Europe at the dawn of the age of idealism, which saw the rise of Greek and Roman culture and a tempest of knowledge and psychological thought, putting an emphasis on individualism as opposed to celebrating deities exclusively. Architecture of the period was durable and showed evidence of being grounded in ratios of mathematical beauty and strength. Finely illustrated pottery and murals recounted events and told tales of Greek deities. And while the forms present on them lacked depth, they were effective at conveying information and emotion. In an effort to display man as equal to their deities, statues crafted of the human form by both the Greeks and Romans were exceptionally well developed, athletic and proportionally accurate, with the intent of crafting works that were flawless. This is not done in defiance of their deities, however, but to prove the potential and aptitude of humans not just in the artistic ability, but in all developing fields. Time passes and civilizations rise and fall, with the Middle Ages seeing Christianity overshadow paganism as the primary ideology in Europe. Part of the era focuses heavily on contextualizing and depicting religious figures, as well as more eccentric art accompanying manuscripts. Architecture and manuscripts received a noticeable upheaval in their design and durability. And while a majority of the artists from the earlier years of this period remained somewhat anonymous, their designs helped shape a contained society which spanned a millennium, encompassing a range of differing, yet similar styles. Art suited the promotion of religion quite well, as it served to beautify and attract followers to an ideology, which was the reason for the incredible increase of detail and grandeur of art during this period across Europe something that the church capitalized on in order to promote the creation of increasingly lavish works in order to attract more followers to Christianity. Did you know that animals listen to dominating tactics because they're scared? If you... Similarly, art served to beautify Buddhism in the East, with countries like Tibet and Thailand primarily crafting statues of a Buddha depicting him in a state of calm in order to allude to people of the harmonious teachings of Buddhism. It is often thought that with the emergence of Islam in the Arabian Peninsula during the 7th century, that the creation of art was forbidden for followers of the religion. However, this is often a misunderstood aspect of the religion. While creating pieces with figures present in them is looked down upon by factions of the various Islamic schools of thought, the pioneering of calligraphy, geometric art, and elaborate patterns were extensively refined by Arabian artists, eventually leading to the creation of some of the most mesmerizing murals and architecture of the Eastern world. Art had also played a central role in the evolution of China's culture. Like the Arabs, calligraphy and architecture are a uniquely refined and stylized part of the Eastern civilization, with countless emperors pushing for the promotion of art in society. This is evidenced by the quality of silk embroidery, ink art, and carvings throughout this period, and became particularly prominent as Chinese art became influenced by the teachings of Buddhism. Throughout this 1000 year period, we see that art was the ultimate asset to make the unknown appear attractive, which made it an exceptionally powerful tool to influence the masses towards an ideology. However, it also proved to become an underlying part of many religions and cultures as their societies developed. We shift our focus back to Europe at the turn of the 15th century, where the Renaissance stirs into being. Arguably one of the most important transitional periods in history, the explosion of insight and culture that had occurred during this era hadn't been seen since the time of the Hellenic civilizations. Art had manifested itself in developing technologies in tandem with mathematics, in fields such as medicine, architecture, engineering, astronomy, and cartography, with this era marking the now exponential progress we've made in the aforementioned fields. As an example of this fact, while Andreas Vesalius was one of the primary leaders in anatomical studies at the time, influential artists such as Leonardo da Vinci and Albrecht Dürer had similarly propelled our understanding of the human body through their efforts. Dissecting and illustrating the human form and the increased insight concerning how our organs operated had evolved medicinal practice and proved paramount to kickstarting our endless quest to understand our shells. To be an artist during this period required a great understanding of utilizing perspective and form as opposed to pieces of previous eras, as artworks had fully embraced composition and incorporated what we now know as the general elements of design within them. While religions continue to use art as a tool to inspire and control the masses, the Renaissance itself was brought about due to the rising middle classes questioning of the church. Looking into the past and analyzing the mannerisms of Greek and Roman culture, 
We have found solace in the fact that these civilizations, despite keeping sentiments of worship as part of their lives, thrived due to the ideology of humanism, which was refined during the Renaissance itself. Owning art paralleled wealth and social status, while art itself had evolved into more of an industry during this period, with institutions teaching the field popping up all around Europe. The emergence of the line concerning what it meant to be an artist as opposed to an architect or engineer was faint, but had begun to show itself, and one simply didn't hold the title of artist, but was a specialist in a particular field. To be skilled at more than one's field was achievable based on the prerogative of the individual, with some artists finding prominence in a wide array of areas. The rise of academies eventually helped solidify the master artist's efforts and granted them esteemed positions. But with success comes complacency. And with complacency comes fear of change. Taken as a whole, the religious agenda of the medieval age was continually expressed within art of the Renaissance. But art of the era simultaneously assisted scientific and societal development and laid the groundwork for the way the artist approaches art itself due to taking a far more technical approach to creating art compared to the efforts of previous eras. Various artistic forms were once again used as a tool by religions during the Baroque era, with art of the time displaying grandiose spectacle, as well as events that had transpired within the period itself. Meanwhile, the neoclassical movement saw artists aiming to recapture the grace and acute nature of Greco-Roman art by recreating figures from the Hellenic era. Art also saw its use as a political tool in order to show off the lives of the wealthy and influential, playing a vital role in instilling belief in figures like Napoleon, which saw art continue to be a highly effective tool for pushing an agenda. And at this point, the scale begins to tip. While European art in particular was largely used for political gain or to push a religious agenda, pieces had slowly begun to embrace human fragility, with some artists opting to display the subtle complexities concerning the seemingly simplistic mannerisms of human life, with the Romantic Age showing a further emphasis on the individual, nature, and the celebration of imagination, while the Impressionist movement focused on crafting saturated landscapes flooded with stylized light and shadows, which not only proved to accentuate figures in the environments they inhabited, but elicited raw emotion from the observer at first glance a contrast to the somber nature of the neoclassical style, which effectively used chiaroscuro and begs the observer to walk into the piece, decipher its message, and wonder a while. Stepping back to a global view once more, we see the development of tribal art transform at a steady pace across the world. The Native Americans saw totems and pottery serve as an inherent part of their culture with symbolism and style being influenced by the surroundings of a tribe. They were also incredibly efficient in how they dealt with aspects of their daily lives, with no portion of what they had at their disposal going to waste. For example, every part of a hunted animal was used effectively, and this resulted in the creation of simple, yet elaborate clothing, technologies, and ceremonial tools as a result of their practices. Meanwhile, in Africa, Masks and statues continue to be a core part of countless tribes throughout the continent, with innovation of art slowly resulting due to the evolution of ritualistic behaviors. One of the most unique tribes in Africa, however, would be the Indabele tribe of South Africa, which not only developed some of the most stylistically distinct African art, but intentionally fostered art as part of its very culture. Distinct geometric forms against stark contrasting backgrounds forms the basis of the Indabele style, which encompassed everything from the architecture, clothing, and tools of the people. While color has almost always had a role in drawing emotion in art, the Ndebele were one of the first Southern African tribes to specifically utilize a wide area of colors to convey specific meaning as part of their very lives. Their style further developed during the 20th century, with beadwork becoming synonymous with the Ndebele, a culture that is still strong within South Africa today. Art in Japan strayed a different course from the realism movement sweeping the world. Tonal forms have always been less prominent in Japanese art, while line work and intelligent use of color were preferred to subtly add flair to pieces. This inspired artists like Van Gogh to craft art with an emphasis on the effective use of brushstrokes and color as opposed to the process of blending his paintings. As the world became more interconnected, so too did the active exploration of artistic styles, with Japanese and POA paintings and the geometric forms of African art playing pivotal roles in shaping neo-Western styles. 
While art continues to be a natural part of various societies and cultures across the world, thoughts on art itself were fragmented in Europe during the 19th and early 20th centuries. The emergence of more expressive styles were frowned upon by the academies due to the perceived lack of effort and skill in creating such pieces, dividing those who used art to express their emotions and thoughts, and those who saw it as something that should always depict the world in a manner that reflects how one sees with their own eyes. Those who chose to create more expressive styles would often lose their alumni with the academies and their standing with society, with many independent artists confined to poverty, and fewer still only finding reverence after death. From here, we see the realism movement find firm ground, as well as the gradual birth of a wealth of anti- and neo-art movements. Free from the constraints of a specific ideology or cause, art transforms into a far more subjective field, and artworks both new and old are interpreted in bold new ways by observers and artists alike. Take the creation of Adam by Michelangelo, for example. It is argued by scholars that despite his faith in the Catholic Church, that a brain surrounds his depiction of God in the piece, and leading to a suggestion that the creation of gods is something man-made in itself. Adding to the fact that some would insist that his depiction of God is akin to an older version of Michelangelo himself, and it is certainly guaranteed to raise a few eyebrows. It is imperative to keep in mind, however, that these are just some of the many interpretations of the piece. The observer is free to interpret what they deem appropriate. With the advent of modern art comes the continued argument of realism versus style. Between observers and artists alike, some are adamant that realism should prevail over style, as it shows the artist's true technical capacity and skill as an artist. Many artists of varying techniques know that this notion simply doesn't hold much water, however, with Picasso proving to be the perfect antithesis to the perceived correlation of realism and artistic ability. From a young age, Picasso was perfectly able to capture the style of the old masters, but because his immense talent was tapped from a young age, it provoked him to explore alternate directions for which to take his art, leading to him pioneering the Cubism movement and deriving eternal joy from creating art, for his life had become art. It's a reminder to the aspiring artists that they're free to explore whatever medium or style they see fit, as realism isn't the epitome of art. However, it still plays a fundamental role for any artist, as one cannot expect to inject style into their work without understanding reality itself first. Regardless of formal training or natural talent, in this contemporary age, it could be stated that the amateur cannot compete with the professional, the very thing the masters of the neoclassical movement had both predicted and feared. In reality, however, art today has become less about the style of an age or society as it has been about the artists discovering and expressing their own style, regardless of the medium, ability, or style of the artist. Being an artist may not hold the same weight in accelerating society today as five centuries prior, and studying the history of art in acute detail certainly isn't a stipulation to become an artist, but understanding our past is a necessary step to begin crafting a future that encourages critical thought. For thought breeds action, and with action comes creation. Inspiration takes hold, and the cycle begins anew. Across history, art has been a powerful tool to push agendas and promote ideologies. It has been the fabric and bridge between countless cultures and people. Art is capable of taking us to times long past and places we can only imagine. Art will always mean different things to different people. Today, however, art is anything you want it to be. And to me, that is a beautiful thought. Okay. So there you go. Yun yung mga isa doon sa mga isasama nyo sa portfolio ninyo para doon sa project. So again, uh, reminders para dito sa asa na yung Facebook page ninyo. Okay. Again, para sa benefit nung ngayon lang, nagpakita o nagparamdam, meron po tayong Facebook page, mga Mr. at saka Miss. Ito yun. Dito kayo magsasabit ng task through via comments dun sa submission post. So submission post para sa week 1 at saka week 2, ibig sabihin yung prelim, i-comment nyo yung sagot ninyo. Hindi attached as file, but rather 
photograph nung pinaka-comment niyo kung nasa yellow pad yan, comment niyo. And then, week one yan. Yung week two naman, re-replyan niyo yung sarili niyong comment para naman sa week. Okay? So, ganyan ang pagsasubmit. Sir, paano sa Google Class? Sa Google Class, yun naman ay backup copy natin. It's better to be safe than sorry. Kung mag-down server man ng Facebook, meron tayong backup copy sa Google Class. Kung mag-down server yung Google account, meron tayong backup copy sa Facebook. Okay? So, wala tayong group chat. Facebook group lang tayo nag engage Pero pwede nyo akong i-engage sa Messenger just the same. Kahit na anong oras pa yan. So, para to sa benefit nung ngayon yan, nagparamdam at nagpapita. Again, ang klase na natin ay 1 o'clock to 2 p.m. starting tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday din yan. I-announce ko na rito para dun sa mga wala ngayon. Ipopost ko na. Okay, attention. Everybody. Our sync week will be perfect. And we will do after every Wednesday and Thursday. Two p.m. to. I sorry, sorry. 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you. Ayan. Same sync with wait. Note. Same sync with link and same class. Ayan. So ayan, in-announce ko na. Okay? So ipopost ko rin to sa Google Class natin. Ayan, i-announce ko na. Tapos ilalagay ko na rin sa tracker. Ayan. Okay? So naka-assign na rin yan sa classwork. Meron na nga nag mga nag-turn in doon sa classwork. Ayan, assigned na yan. Okay, nandyan na. So any, que any questions, reactions? Baka meron pa kayong tanong. Meron dito sa chat. Ano yun? Ah, wala. Okay. So, any questions? Any other concerns? Starting tomorrow yun, ha? So, okay tayo sa 1 or baka kakakain nyo lang nun? Inaanto kayo. Gusto nyo yung 2 p.m. Ano ba talaga? Mr. Jerry, what do you think for the class? Sure. Okay tayo sa 1 or, or baka antukin pa kayo nun? 2 o'clock. Ika kayo. Ako, okay lang ako. Sana'y ako nagising. <laughs> okay lang naman. Umahap. So, okay tayo dun. 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Tama? At siguro sir, adjust natin kay 2 an hour lang, late na 2. 2 o'clock. So, uh, uh, everybody, amenable tayo dun sa 2 p.m. na lang. Wednesday, Thursday. 1 to 2 daw, sabi ni Miss Haling. Kasi okay po, sige po. Sige. Schedule, kasi syempre nga naman, schedule ng jowa nila yun. Syempre, di ba? <laughs> jowa timing eh. Hindi, hindi time, time sir. Di ba? Okay. Uh, naiintindihan natin yun. So, so oh, work daw. O, dike, work. Hashtag, jowa. Ano? Tama, sige, sige, okay. May bebe time kasi ako. Yan, naiintindihan ko naman. Okay? Sana all may jowa, ano? Sige, okay, thank you, ha. So, okay na tayo. Mag-pray na tayo. Any, or any other concern you may want to add? Jowa, out ng two. <laughs> so, any other concerns? Wala? None. Okay, at... Ah, announcement na pala. Bukas na pala, huwag kayong umabsent. Uh, please, huwag kayong umabsent. Dahil bukas yung sinasabi kong makapagpagdamdaming orientation na you, you, uh, you need to hear and watch. Okay? Kasi alang-alang ko sa pag-aaral ninyo, alang-alang ko sa pag aaral ninyo. Alam ko naman na yun yung na pagka nakakarinig kayo ng teacher na nagsisirong sa pag-aaral, kaya kung tura nyo, ay suspi, ito na naman, una sir, una sir. Ayan. Bear with me. Atinan nyo yung bukas, then thank you din. Importante yung para sa mga. Okay? So, atinan nyo yung tomorrow natin, ang manok lang. Okay? So, any other concerns? Yes, Mr. Dwight? Or... Ah, nandaw, nandaw. Calling once, twice, thrice. Okay, none, let us pray.
Lord God, maraming maraming salamat po sa lesson po na ipagkakalog niyo po sa amin ngayon. Kaya po ulit ng talino, nakasagalik po. Sa mga subjects po namin, hindi lang po sa art app, pati na rin po sa lahat ng na-enroll namin ng Don Cycle 3. Panginoon, ang lesson po namin, we offer this sa inyong banal na harapan. In Jesus Christ name, Amen. Okay, salamat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye po. Thank you po. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm.